It's a three-guest day on BYU Sports Nation, and the third and final of the hour is John Ledyard from the Draft Network, NFL draft expert on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. John, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, first and foremost, we want to wish you a sincere congratulations on hitting Fred Warner dead on the mark <laughs> last year. Nailed it. Yeah, yeah man. Well, well done. What did you know that we didn't? I don't know. I just nobody was really talking about Fred Warner, and so I, going into the Senior Bowl, I was a little bit skeptical because I knew he was going to have to play. He was an edge rusher who didn't rush the quarterback, so it was it was a weird situation. I think that's what made a lot of people be a little more hesitant to get to him. But you know, I was intrigued by what I saw from him in coverage, but really that was it in terms of his skill set. He didn't really play behind the line of scrimmage, so you didn't really get a great feel for how he was going to be as a true off ball guy. But then at the Senior Bowl, it was almost all behind the line of scrimmage. So you got to see him go through his reads, and it was just so natural for him. He was he took to it so quickly. He was such a smart football player. I did a piece back on uh, when I was working for NDT Scouting before we became the Draft Network where we are now. Um, that piece, I don't think you can find it anymore on the Internet, but I basically broke down his Senior Bowl tape, uh, the film from the Senior Bowl, the game and the practices, and was like, look, this guy's seeing his reads. He's keying on pulling guards. He's attacking the gap. He's aggressive coming downhill. He's going to be really good around the box, and I think he's a good enough athlete to be able to play in coverage and do some things there too. So it translated quickly for him in the NFL, which didn't surprise me. The one thing he has to clean up is the same thing he had issues with in college, missed tackles. He's got to get guys on the ground 1v1 more often to be relied upon as, as, a, uh, more con- as a consistent playmaker, I think. And I think he has the same – level of talent is guys like Darius Leonard and, and Roquan Smith and those kind of guys. I think he can be in that uh, similar conversation with those guys. Um, you know, obviously a really good linebacker class, but he's just got to get guys on the ground more consistently 1v1. I think he will as his career you know, progresses, but I think that's got to be a big priority for him in the offseason. Quite the compliment and commentary on Fred Warner. Now we look ahead to 2019 this year, the potential Cougars who could be drafted. It would seem that there are three names in the mix. Perhaps you feel otherwise. Corbin Kafusi, the defensive end, Sione Taki, the linebacker who's really made a splash the last two weeks, and then Austin Hoyt, a uh, tackle. What do you think of those guys? Yeah, so I've barely seen any of Hoyt at this point. I'm intrigued by him, but I have to get to way more tape studying him, so I'll reserve judgment on him until I've seen a little bit more. Kafusi, I've watched over the years, watched uh, his whole family, right? He's gone to BYU. I think there, I think it wasn't their dad, like a, wasn't their dad a coach there? Yes, and uh, played in the NFL, and then the Bronson right. Kafusi's with the Jets, was with the Ravens, and now Devin, the younger right. brother, is a sophomore. So, yeah, it's the whole family, exactly. Right. <laughs> I watched Bronson coming out. I talked to him a lot at the Senior Boys year. Man, awesome kid, awesome family. So, you know, they're going to check the, the boxes character wise. Certainly love the game of football. Um, with Kalfuzi, the biggest issue is pad level and not having, like, where's his natural fit, you know, because he played standing up on the edge sometimes for BYU. He played with his hand down, and certainly he has intriguing length uh, and can get in the passing lanes and things like that, but probably not going to test at a high level athletically. So we see an every down edge guy, see kind of a rotational piece for a team. I think he's going to have to prove that he can pass rush from the inside. And when he gets to a camp and he'll get to a camp, He's going to have to prove that he can be an interior pass rusher and hold up well enough against the run to, to be an adequate presence there and not get bullied around. But the pad level is definitely an issue. But I like, I mean, effort-wise, you're definitely getting what you want. Like I said, the length is intriguing. There are times he can keep blockers off his frame really well at times. Um, so I think that that's going to be the key for him. What kind of value does he Because he's probably not going to be an every-down guy in the NFL. So what value does he give as a long and late downs type nickel inside rusher? Um, can he be a player of that magnitude or at least develop into a player of that magnitude? That will be kind of the key for him. And for Takataki, I think, man, I, I, I watched him at the Shrine, and I was like, man, this, this, guy's, this guy's all right. Like, he can play. Like, he definitely doesn't hesitate, super physical. Um, then I didn't see much of him at the Senior Bowl. I know he got there late, and I, I didn't notice – the linebackers are kind of pointless to watch usually unless it's backs on backers uh, in practice. Um, so, I, you know, I didn't get to see a ton of him in the, in the practice or in the game, but um, very physical guy on his tape. You, know, you can tell he doesn't hesitate to kind of come downhill and uh, he'll, he'll pop guys at times if need be as well. So, um, you know, I think he takes on blocks. I mean, he's just not the biggest linebacker. And athletically, you can see the limitations are pretty real. He also kind of played all over. So the versatility, you know, may be big for him. But obviously, day three guys we're talking about here. And I think that the desire, the, the need is going to be for them to prove themselves on special teams in the NFL. And he certainly kind of has, 
He's a good tackler, it seems like, so far into his tape, and um, definitely a physical guy who welcomes that aspect of the game. So those traits really lend themselves pretty well, but the, the key for him is going to be athletic testing. I don't know whether he's a combine invite or not, uh, or whether it'll have to be at his pro day, but he's got to test well and show teams that he can move uh, because in today's NFL, linebackers that are starting, that are playing on the field, they got to be able to move. Your depth guy's got to be able to move because you want him to run on special teams and you want him to be able to, to opt in at least on passing down. So that is more prevalent for linebackers these days than ever before. And so I think that's going to be big for him. But he plays with a cowboy collar. So you know he's got some swagger. <laughs> Seriously. I'm a big fan of that. That moved him up my board immediately. <laughs> John Ledyard of the Draft Network with us on BYU Sports Nation. Who has the best chance to be drafted? Is it Corbin Kafusi or is it Sione Takitaki? I think it's Taki Taki. I think he definitely is the, is the one with the better chance. You know, Kalfusi is going to get some interest. There will be certain scheme fits maybe for him. And again, it will come down to testing. You know, some guys can, some guys really test well, even though if they don't play that athletically, I don't think either guy's a great athlete on tape, but when, when they test, somebody could, could really impress and intrigue a team enough that they pull the trigger. So uh, maybe I'll be wrong, but I think Taki Taki, I think that there's uh, more of a chance for him to make an impact on special teams than there is for Cal Fusi. Since both of them are going to be you know, day three picks at best, that is probably going to be a big difference maker in the minds of NFL teams. So I would bet that uh, he has a, the better chance of being drafted because of that. John, we need to do this again before the draft. Uh, in the time being, how do people find your stuff right now? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Ledyard NFL Draft. Uh, you can follow the Draft Network at Draft Network LLC. We've got lots of new content and features and things like that rolling out uh, over the next couple of weeks, especially right before the combine. So good time to be following along with the draftnetwork.com. All right, John. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. John Ledyard on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Tremendous break. Does he know of, his of stuff? Those guys. Does he know his stuff? That was, that was awesome.